Hi everyone, this is Teo from Pragablocks.com. Welcome to another drawing tutorial. In today's tutorial, I will show you what goes on in my mind when I'm sketching a scene like this. So this tutorial is sort of like a follow-up to the earlier tutorial that I've created for drawing on public transport. I found this photo on Flickr. This is a photo that was taken inside a train, probably from Hong Kong. So there are a lot of people on the train and I like this because there are a lot of people so there are a lot of things to draw and the people they are standing in front of uh, one another so there is a lot of overlap and with that you can create a sense of that. Now this is a photo that means the composition has already been chosen for you sometimes there could be distortion as well. My main focus will be on this person here standing right in the middle his legs are cropped off because of the photograph but in real life you will be able to see his leg and his leg is going to be somewhere around here all these people on the left and right side they are cropped off as well so drawing from photographs there are some limitations I prefer to draw from real life because you can see everything up close and this is quite a small photograph that is on my phone so the details are a bit smaller it's very difficult for me to see some of the details okay so I have to keep this person in mind because I want to fit this person onto the page I want to make sure that the head is somewhere around here the feet is somewhere around here and once I fit the largest object in the page all the other uh, people in the page they will be able to fit in because this is the largest if you can fit the largest onto the page you can fit all the other uh, smaller subjects there I am going to start with the person on the left that is holding the handrail for this person his feet is here so it intersects this guy here uh, around this point his head is here so it intersects this guy around here so when I'm drawing I need to draw this person a bit smaller like um, this proportion so that this guy here can fit uh, here like this when I'm holding the sketchbook I might actually place my finger uh, to the place where his feet is so I'll hold my sketchbook like this with my thumb around this and my index finger will be right here at the top where his head is and I will try to visualize where his belt is which is somewhere around here it's around the midpoint here so I can start by drawing the head the clothes the belt area and the pants and it should fit nicely here This is the handrail. So the handrail overlaps this person. Usually when I'm drawing on the train, the train will be shaking, but it doesn't shake so much that I cannot draw. And when I'm drawing like this, I'm using some contour uh, drawing techniques as well. Sometimes I make mistakes. For example, here I probably should have drawn the hairline much lower this is the collar this is where his hand is so the hand the position of the hand is right beneath the ear when drawing you have to take note of all these uh, alignment issues and this arm it curves down and it goes into the sleeve here and the sleeve has some curves some jacket lines and there is this back that is carrying and it curves back into the collar there I might want to add some wrinkles if I'm drawing on the train, if I know that I am going to alight very soon, I'm going to draw very quickly. So right now I'm just going to draw very quickly. This is the belt area. And I'm reaching the bottom of the feet. I drew this person a bit larger than I wanted to. So 
I'm going to have some problem fitting this person in. Since I'm right-handed, I draw from the left to right so that I do not go over the lines again. If I go over the lines when they are not dry, they are going to smear the page. Now as I'm drawing, I will align basically the guy's collar to where this is. The back is all the way down to this position here. So I can draw that in first. Move it up like this and use a very quick motion. And this is the jeans that he's wearing. So this leg here, this right leg is going to go all the way down to this side here. It's going to be very difficult to fit in this uh, leg and the shoe. The other feet is going to intersect somewhere around here. So I'm just going to draw it like this. If you have problem uh, looking at the shapes because of so much foreshortening and perspective, you can use contour drawing techniques. Don't pay attention to what you are um, thinking. Just pay attention to the lines that you see and try and follow the lines. So we have this person in the scene now. Mm, there's another person standing behind him probably yeah I should draw it since she is standing there she comes out uh, that's her head the reason why I'm I had I'm hesitant to draw her is because once I draw her in she's going to basically mess up this person's shape so I might want to use a thinner line for her and her feet is going to inter uh, intersect somewhere around here so I'm going to use a very thin line so can you see how strange it is to when I add this person behind and it interferes with the shape of the back but if you add colors later on probably it's not going to be a big deal but that's something to take note of because you want your shapes your drawing to read clearly Alright, for this next person, he's standing on the on the side of this guy. He's standing further away, so he's going to be a bit smaller. And one thing about drawing from photos is the photos may not be able to capture all the shadow information. If you are looking at this scene with um, while you're drawing from life you are going to be able to see all the different shadow uh, tones because your eye is that sensitive but for the camera actually right now when i'm looking at the scene this whole area here is just one black area it's very difficult for me to differentiate um, what i'm looking at So most importantly is to get the proportion right. You might have to spend a bit longer to observe to get the proportion right. If not, um, it's going to be a bit challenging uh, to draw a convincing drawing. So for all the people who are actually seated down, I can just basically just try and scribble the shapes. They are in the background, so I'm not too uh, worried. If you have the time, you can actually just um, draw them slowly. But if you want to, you can draw the people in the background with very thin lines so that they do not attract attention. Let me fast forward this part. So this is how I draw on the train. Start with the largest subject first and then work my way to the smaller subjects and people in the background and then finally add some context by drawing the background and now I'm going to color this today I'm using Daniel Smith watercolor I will be using an analogous color scheme that is a color scheme where the colors are close to each other on the color wheel so it would be yellow, orange, red 
I color the skin tone first before I add in the other colors. So now I want to use yellow. I add a bit of new gumbosh to make the yellow appear a bit more lively. If not, if you are just using one single color, it's going to appear a bit flat. So that's orange and with orange, I'm going to add a bit of red and after the orange, I'm going to use red and after that, I use violet. In this case, uh, the color that I'm using is actually Queen of Crydon Magenta. The red is Queen of Crydon Red. The orange is New Gumbosh and the yellow is Lemon Yellow. So after adding all the bright colors, I can add in the darker shades. This dark shade is created by mixing three primary colors together. That would be Lemon Yellow, Queen of Crydon Red and Thalo Blue. So this is a nice shade. I try not to mix the colors too cleanly so that I can still see the individual colors showing through. I think it's more, uh, it's visually more pleasing to see colors like that. So I work my way around the scene, coloring all the dark areas. If I were to just leave the sketch without the dark shade stand, everything would look a bit bright. But with the dark shades, the dark tones, it provides that additional contrast to make colors appear brighter. I mean, if you are just looking at white without black, it's just white. But with black beside the white, it makes the white even brighter. So that's how contrast works. This is now dry. I like the colors. I use the analogous color scheme, which is colors that are close to each other on the color wheel. So in this case, it's yellow, orange, and red, and this are violet. So for the dark tones, it's a mixture of three primary colors. The problem area is this part here. So just now I should not have drawn the person that is standing to the side of this guy. Right now I know that this person is wearing a bag, but the person in the background, um, because of the way that I've drawn it, this whole shape here, it's a bit illogical. So if your line art does not look right, if it lacks the clarity, Adding colors later on is not going to help the drawing much. So this is usually how I approach drawing a crowded uh, train carriage in real life. If you are a beginner and want to learn how to draw from observation, I have an online art course on my Gumroad webpage. The link is in the video description below. So you can enroll in the course and learn how to draw from observation, basically learn how to use all the techniques that I've just taught you. You will learn them in greater detail in the course. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. See you in the next video. Bye.